afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-Earth. My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, joined, as always, by my friend Grifflet. Up and Adam Grifflet, it's time to get back to work. Okay, he's having a little nap over here under the haystack. All right. We are back. And we are in La Sarnach. Very excited to be finishing this penultimate region before we get to Minas Tirith, except, of course... I was reminded last week that, of course, we have to go all the way through Southern Athelion and through Osgiliath before we get to Minas Tirith. But that's okay. Griffith is still going to finish La Sarnach, uh before Christmas, which was the goal. My goal is to get to Minas Tirith by Christmas, but I don't think I'm going to finish this region and two others. But let's see what Griffith can do. So Griffith had gotten a bunch of quests here in Arnach last time. And he can hand in a whole bunch of them, apparently. I think he did all of Dagor's quests, or at least many of them. So let's see, where is Dagor again? Oh, quite in the opposite direction. Yes, right, into the city, not out of it. Right, exactly. Right, Hologros says, I expect to hit Minas Tirith around Valentine's Day at this point. Well, nah, that sounds reasonable. If I have to do all of Southern Athelian and Osgiliath. That seems likely. Alright. So there's Indir, and Dagor is inside. Very aptly named Dagor. Let's see, he's around here, right? There we go. Alright, Dagor, what do you say? This darkness is a weight on my mind. Like a chi whoa. Like a chicken headless. That's what the Haradrim have become. Thanks to my strategy and your hard work. They'll be confounded and demoralized now. Ah, what am I doing here? I should be up north by Forlong's side. I hope only that my absence does not jeopardize the war. So the men of Forlong... I'm trying to remember. Did the men of... Of Arnach... Like the people of Lasarnach. I know that Forlong goes up, but only with a small contingent because he's leaving most of them home. I guess they come up after the battle. That's they're a big part of the reinforcements. So Dagor, the good news is you'll probably get to go to the Black Gate. Alright. My plan goes well apace. Boy, he is a modest fellow, isn't he, Phil? Thank you. We will soon send these Southrons back with their tails between their legs. Yes, we shall. I'm so glad of your help there. Okay, and that's this it, right? Is a weight on my mind. Okay, so that's you. Now I've got the boats. Oh, I only sabotaged two war horns, but that's all right. And then the, oh, right, the little ribbons and such. Okay. Sure. Boats, ribbons, horns. Okay. Got it. <laughs> the bad news is that I'll have to go to the Black Gate. Look, I'm sure, like, would Dagor want to be anywhere else than Dagorlad? I don't think so. Okay, so, let us see what we have here. How far are we going? Yeah, far enough. All right, let's mount up. Let's put on his invisibility hat. Uh, well, if I were him, I would have named my son Dagorlad. I mean, sure, why not? What could possibly be the downside? Okay. Let's see. We're going to be heading... It's just going out around here. This is... This is slightly odd. We've got the... 
I'm just thinking of Imloth Meloe. Okay. So we've got the town sort of on the this one little hill and then we've got this gap this walled gap leading to Imloth Meloe which I had not imagined as being behind walls. But the kind of sheltered garden thing about it is kind of interesting. All right, no, no, I want to double back down here is where I want to go. Okay. No. Man, this whole region just confuses me. Yeah, I guess actually, all right, fine. This just goes up back into the town. It's the difference between the town and the farms around the town, but on the same hill. That keep confusing me. So I do want to head out here and then take the next right. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, so last time I finished attempting to answer JJ's lore question, um, but uh, not finishing because I ended up getting all distracted in multiple different dimensions at the same time. So let me, oops, hmm, okay, fine, let me just mount though. All right, I got, I'm looking for, what am I looking for? This is, uh, I think this is where those, uh, other horns are. But anyhow, okay. Um, we were talking about the not, so to remind folks, what was the last lore question we'd been discussing about? Um, it was, uh, about the Witch King. When Eowyn stabs the Witch King, is he, like, dead dead? Or is he just seriously decloaked? And, uh... Hmm. All right. Okay. I wanted to go back over there. Let's go back over here. Okay, was he or was he just seriously de uh, decloaked? So again, when the ring wraiths were overtaken in the uh, ford of Bruinen, <clears throat> and their horses drowned, they were. Uh, they were uncloaked. Which doesn't just mean they physically lost their cloaks. They were stripped of their form and had to return formless to the uh, to Mordor in order to be reinvested with form by Sauron. And so the question is is that what happened to the Witch King or not? And specifically, specifically the question was about the, uh, the description of, the description of the, uh, you know, the winged creature, which Sam and Frodo see flying overhead, returning to Mordor at the time of the death of the Witch King. Right, and again to remind folks when I can stealth myself again. Um, as, Frodo and Stam's, as Frodo and Sam stood and gazed, the rim of light spread all along the line of the Efelduoth. And then they saw a shape moving at a great speed out of the west, at first only a black speck against the glimmering strip above the mountaintops, but growing until it plunged like a bolt into the dark canopy and passed high above them. 
As it went, it sent out a long, shrill cry, the voice of a Nazgul, but this cry no longer held any terror for them. It was a cry of woe and dismay, ill tidings for the Dark Tower. The Lord of the Ringwraiths had met his doom. So the immediate question is, what is the speck flying overhead? Is that like the returning formless spirit of the Witch King coming back to Mordor in order to be reinvested eventually, perhaps after, you know, an inconvenient time or whatever? Um, or is that something else? And I was saying last time that I believe that is not the Witch King. I believe that that is one of the other Nazgul who is returning to Mordor with the news of the death of the Witch King. Um, that the Witch King has already gone elsewhere, in my opinion, um, and that we are um, we are not, in fact, seeing the Witch King's soul returning there. So there's several reasons why I think this. The primary reason I think this, hang on, I'm trying to stab this sorcerer from behind if I possibly can, excuse me, pardon me. If you, would you stand a little without your back to something? I mean, it's rude. I mean, I'm trying to stab you in the back. You're not helping. Be an active hindrance to this process, and that's just discourteous. Uh, so there are several reasons why I do not believe that what we are seeing there uh, is in fact the Witch King returning. Um, the number one reason is the whole prophecy of Glorfindel thing. Um, that I think that there's too much of a big deal made about, um, you know, the doom of the Witch King, you know, not by the hand of man and all that sort of thing, for it to be like, not by the hand of man shall you be temporarily inconvenienced. Like, it just does not have that uh, sense at all. And in fact, um, it seems fairly clear that uh, that's not the kind of thing that they mean uh, there, uh, because okay, now back to ribbons. Uh, it seems pretty clear that that's not the kind of thing that they mean, because we know for a fact, like, it, it, it's, you know, so the prophecy is made um, in uh, 1974 of the Third Age, i.e. at the fall of Fornost, and um, you know, that this is going to happen to the Witch King. If all that is being prophesized is his essentially temporary disembodiment, um, then that prophecy was fulfilled at the Fort of Bruin Inn, right? Because he was disembodied. He was temporarily disembodied at the Fort of Bruin Inn. Um, so, uh, and since no one seems to hold that the prophecy has been fulfilled at that point, seriously, I was spotted by a, an insect? Grifflet, that's just embarrassing. Okay. Um, oh, that's the thing I want. Where's my... Uh, oh, there it is. Just in case. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, I certainly do not think that that is the case. I think that his death that was prophesied is his actual real death. He is gone. He is done. Even like that reference about the doom of the Witch King. Nobody had to go back to Mordor with news uh, about the discomfiture of the Witch King and the rest of the Nazgul at the Fort of Bruinen. They all went back and told him themselves. And that's exactly the language that Gandalf uses about it, that they've been forced to return to their master. Uh... 
that is not the language that is used of the Witch King after Eowyn stabs him through the face. Um, we talk about, even in that very passage, we talk about his doom. And that is a much bigger deal than merely, uh, again, the uh, r r discomfiture. That's the word that uh, Elrond uses. The discomfiture of the riders um, is how Elrond describes what happens to them after the Ford of Bruinen. Um, and again, that is not the language that we are using um, about the Witch King. We're talking about his doom. Um, the, you know, one of their enemies has met his end. Look at how uh, Gandalf uh, talks about, you know, the Witch King and his death. Um, it, it's pretty clear to me that we're talking about actual death here. And so therefore, I do not think that it is possible that it could be the Witch King who is uh, sailing overhead there, headed back to Sauron. I think it's one of the other... Um, I think it's one of the other Nazgul. And... Huh. Wait, who's, who's this other one? Oh, this is still more... Seal their lips, still more banners, huh? Okay, let's head over here. I don't want to go back into that camp again if I can avoid it. Um, yeah, so I definitely do not think that he is just needing to recover. Another thing to keep in mind, a lot of people seem to forget, or no, let me say this a different way. A lot of people seem to overestimate Sauron's ability to know things from a distance. I would actually add that um, it's getting harder in some ways for people to remember that not knowing what was going on any distance from you used to be quite normal. That is, I don't know. I, I, I feel that the assumption that Sauron is somehow keeping tabs on everything from a distance, remotely. Um, in part, of course, this is encouraged by the language about, you know, his eye that is like you know, the, the far-seeing eye of Sauron. And so people are like, well, Sauron knows everything that's going on. Well, if he knew everything that was going on, then it would be a pretty hopeless situation for the bad guys, or for the good guys, right? Um, but it's, it's, relative, it's pretty clear that, in fact, that is not the situation. Um, he, Sauron, is far more clueless about that. He cannot see the ring from a distance. If so, there, Frodo would not have gotten very far. He cannot sense the ring from a distance. Um, the mere presence of the ring is not, like, does not sort of do it, does not give things away uh, to Sauron. He does not sense the ring's presence even in the heart of his realm until Frodo puts it on and claims it. Then he is aware of it. Um... Yes, Edith, exactly. The whole plot line of The Lord of the Rings is predicated on the hope that they could sneak into Mordor without him noticing. Exactly, exactly. Um, uh, and yes, it, that's exactly the point, JJ, that back in the Third Age, before the invention of cell phones, the Nazgul would have had to use a payphone uh, in order to contact Mordor, and that's, that's, precisely, that's precisely the issue there. But no, I mean, I really do think that uh, people have uh, it's become part of our overall uh, like orientation to the world you know that like um, you like the, the default is that you know one should be able to stay in touch 
uh, over long distances. Um, the sheer impossibility of that as a like fundamental, you know, uh, factor of life, <laughs> I do think is something that people are kind of losing sight of in some ways. Okay. Yeah, Phil talks about that. Uh, yes, good. Narofine uh, says, even with a Palantir, there's still a fog of war. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with Phil's comment um, that Palantir is like a really fancy telescope. You have to know in which direction to point it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, right, JJ says, my pastor made that point once how when we were kids we could look stuff up in books but if it wasn't there we didn't know nowadays he has no excuse not to know anything because his kids just say will say ask google there are so many ways in which uh there's so i mean it's, it's like a really obvious thing to say there's so many ways in which the internet has changed the world um but uh but it's really important to keep that in mind and i think there are a lot of ways in which um people do essentially sort of forget about some of these things. The idea of... Is there another boat down here? Just this one? Just this one, I guess. Um, yeah. The whole idea of not being... Like, it's, it's becoming harder and harder for people even to imagine a world in which the only way to communicate with people over distances was to send a person, you know, to send a person like on foot or on horseback with a written letter and hope that they get there in time, find the person and get there before, like, you, so like to send a message on ahead, you kind of can't send a message on ahead. Um, like that, it doesn't, it, I mean, you can only do that if you have a messenger who's faster than you are, right? I mean, it's just, there are a lot of ways, I think, in which we, um, what am I using to exp <laughs> destroy those supplies? Griffin is destroying the supplies with extreme prejudice here. Um, but, um, yeah, so I just, I know it sounds trite to say, you know, like that, like we need to like consider these things and keep them in mind that like the internet didn't exist. Um, like obviously the internet didn't exist, but as I say, I do think there are ways in which it has really affected our imaginations in what I believe are some fairly profound ways. Um, and I feel like I, I see this often, um, even in my own, like I'll catch myself making sort of assumptions. Um, and uh, this is one, like, how does, how does the, how does Sauron know that the Witch King is dead? The Witch King has died. How does, how does, how does he know? How does he know the Witch King's dead? Well, he knows the Witch King's dead because somebody comes and tells him that the Witch King is dead. Um, if nobody flies in to Mordor and lets him know, how's he going to know? He doesn't know. Um, so... Yeah, I, I think that, um, so that's why, uh, it, this is among the reasons why I believe that um, uh, the creature that they see flying overhead is not itself the Nazgul, or is not itself the Witch King, um, but is, in fact, the Witch King's the messenger, the bearer of bad news to Baradur. And it's the way that everybody talks about the event and the contrast between how they talk about the fall of the Witch King on the field of Pelennor and the discomfiture of the Witch King and his associates uh, at the Ford of Bruinen, which convinces me that we're not talking about the merely temporary... Um, uh, 
you know, a, a merely temporary issue here with uh, the death of the when 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 Eowyn stabs him in the face, he's gone for good. <laughs> right. Snake says, "Oh, Witch King, you shall not have been mortally wounded in vain." Okay, um, is there another supply in land here? Oh, yeah, there is. Okay, Edith says, Would he feel some effect of the Witch King's non-existence through the Witch King's ring? All I can say is apparently not. Apparently not. Or at least the other Nazgul, one of the other, you know, slaves of the nine rings thinks it necessary you know to uh to go back and tell him in person um so i can only conclude uh that no sauron can't detect it through the one ring or through either well through the through th through the nine through the witch king frame i mean um yeah yeah um Maybe if he had the one, he would know. Because that's possible. That's possible. Okay, is there one more batch of boats? There's the last boat. Oh, man. This guy's just sitting on the boat. Like, say the word, man. I'm ready to head home the instant that... Uh, Y'all tell me we can't. Yikes. That's the mother load of boats. I only need one. Should have gone here first. Seven is an unusual number of boats to burn. I mean, I've burned boats before, but I've rarely burned them seven at a time. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, I'm still four levels over these guys. I'm disappointed that I'm not able to one-shot them from stealth. Guess I'm getting greedy. Oh, nice. I do have a return to Anach milestone. How cunning. Right, exactly, JJ. The one is believed to let Sauron know about the wielders of the three, how much more his own slaves. That's just exactly uh, my thinking about that, too, JJ. That seems to me very sensible. So, yes, all things considered. These are the reasons why I believe that the Witch King is capital D dead. Also, keep in mind to uh, sort of step back and look at it a little bit more. Uh, look at the, the, the question from a little further out. The immortality that is granted by the form of immortality, the twisted and unfortunate brand of immortality that is granted by the nine rings to mortal men doesn't necessarily make them unkillable um they're not going to die of old age right their um uh their <clears throat> paltry little pat of butter is going to keep being scraped over more and more and more bread uh you know and that's why it's how they got to the place where they are um uh <laughs> Their 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 butter thickness, right, has has like reached its asymptote, uh, basically, uh, in in the place where they are. However, um, that doesn't mean, you know, that they can't be killed. There's not but ill omens these days. All right, okay. Indir is pleased with me. Brought peace to my troubled heart by shattering those war horns. Hey, no problem. Oh. Oh, that was Dagor's. Okay. All right, going back to hand in Dagor's final quest. Kendall, I make it a point never to burn swan boats. It's just a personal thing of mine. It's a pledge I'm happy to say I have kept throughout my life so far. We have truly struck a blow to the South Run's heels. By ensuring they cannot fight or think or run, they will surely crumple before us. Um, what was that? The boats one? How is it presenting, preventing them from thinking? 
This is the difference between the war-wise commander and a rustic clad in mail and arms. Are you thinking of someone in particular? This is why I should be at Forlong's side. Dagor, you're obsessed. But, again, you're named Dagor, so... All right, Baronor. Will we ever see There's no time now. The Haradrim, they're planning to attack. What should we do? We must act. Okay. We woke this morning to no Ooh. You're going to reward me for this quest with a pair of pants. What did I get for that? Nothing? I mean, not nothing, but kind of nothing. Um... <laughs> yeah, Kendall says, I bet there's a calculus problem somewhere describing the rate of undeadness of the Nazgul. Yeah, if you could plot the wraithification over time. Um, yeah. The, um, <clears throat> the point, I think, Kendall, would be if you map the wraithification curve. Right. Uh... You know, with, like, butter on the <laughs> y-axis and bread on the x-axis, right? It would come down and it would form an asymptote. The question is, there, there would have to be some... I think there's some threshold, right? There's some line, some horizontal line that cuts across the y-axis that says, you know, when your butter... When your average butter distribution ratio drops to below this line... Um, then it's too late for you. And Frodo had clearly not gotten to there yet in his initial wraithification process. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a fun chart. We can put Gollum, Bilbo, and Frodo on there. Agreed. Yeah, Gollum, who's, who's uh, uh, clearly moved down it. But, um, yeah. And would there, there were, uh, presumably there are different, you know, slopes to that curve involved with like the morgul knife versus possession of the ring um yeah yeah no i'm i'm um yeah i am assuming that butter is quantized i absolutely am um do i think there is like what the one has a certain certain quanta of butter yeah absolutely everybody knows that <clears throat> well everybody in the middle ages knew that um, that you had a certain amount of life and then it drained out of you as you got older. The metaphor that Chaucer used was not butter and bread. It was beer in the beer barrel. Um, that, like, you're born with a full beer barrel and um, life keeps opening the tap and then eventually your beer barrel is going to run dry and that's when you die. Um, anyway, okay. How glad I am you are here. There is no mistaking the word brought back by our scouts. The Haradrim gather and soon they will attack. It is a dark hour, but we must stand strong. We must make what hasty preparations we can. Will you talk to Dagor and Indir? Sure. Help them in any way you can. Okay, I can only imagine what Dagor is going to say about this eventuality. Dagor, it's like Christmas Eve. There's not but ill Griffin, there, there you are. Listen, listen, you must help me out. I sent a number of my men out into the countryside to fight the Southrons. Unless someone goes and finds them, they will miss the Haradrim salt entirely. This is what you're afraid of. They're going to miss the treat? He looks crestfallen and ashamed. Too many of my best men are out there. If they don't return, I don't know how we'll manage our defense. Okay, that's a little more sensible. Oh, what have I done? Ooh, a little remorse from Dagor. A little, a little self-awareness. Okay, that's progress, man. Um, <laughs> no, getting a beer belly, draw snake, was not a form this of immortality, therefore, nor a product of cannibalism. It's a metaphor. There is much to do, and there may be little time. I must work on securing our defenses, but I fear some townsfolk are still outside the Bailey walls. Will you go through Arnok and send them in here to me? Uh, okay. Outside the Bailey. Yes. Whoa. All right. So I've got the... This is the... Okay, so I'm going through and... All right, this is a towns person. Some of these people I don't care about. But you I care about, lady. Okay. Beckoning. Come on. Let's go. This 
It's got to beckon in their general direction. Come on. Let's go. Into the walls. Don't they have like a bell or something? Something somewhat more efficient than sending a hobbit out beckoning to individual persons? Hey, lady, don't tell the stable master. The stable hand over there, he doesn't get to come in, but you should. They should give you a sword and shield. I bet you can fight as well as half these boys. Okay. Yeah, this is one of those situations where that detailed town map would come in handy. Agreed. <laughs> what? It's just leaning. Leaning on a hog's head. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't hate to disturb your, you know, uh, contemplation there. Okay, how many do I have left? All right, that's five beckonings successfully accomplished. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, now you're looking at that tree. You're looking carefully, inspecting the wall of that little silo there. Come on, man. Get into town. Okay, no problem. Uh, and now Dagor's soldiers who are way further afield. So let me just check in with Indor there in case it gives me another quest that I can double up with that one. He was looking at the broadside of a barn. Perhaps preparing to take aim, Drowsnake. I think that that is possible. All right, Indir. There's not but ill. Over yeah, they're all inside. Don't worry, I did plenty of beckoning. The stars only know how much time we have. Not even they, for the sky is blocked from all celestial light. Thank you. Now we must prepare ourselves for the Salfron's assault. Okay. So, and you have nothing further. In that case. Uh, in that case, I will mount up and go fetch the soldiers. I have more beckoning beckons. Okay, let me see if I can find the straighter way out of town this time. I think there is one, right? So if I come out here, instead of going that way, I go this way. Yes! Yes! Okay. Oh, this is the way. Okay. All right. But I think I'm just going to immediately stealth myself. Well, I am stealth on horseback, I suppose. Might as well carry on as I am. Whoa. Hey, hands off that guy. Okay. I found him and he's inconveniently in combat. Yeah, stop messing around with these guys and go help Dagor fight the other guys. No problem. Good, you're returning at once. I'm so glad to hear it. There's so many inconvenient cliffs around here. Okay. <laughs> Kendall says this town is designed like an Ikea. Yes. 
You mean like designed to prevent me being able to leave without buying more stuff? It's a little bit like that. Okay. Ah, uh, here we are. Uh, you must, you needn't, but I'm, you know, I don't you feel like you have to thank me for my aid, but you're welcome. Go back to Dagor now. All right. Okay. <laughs> the Cliffs of Inconvenience. Not quite as bad as the Cliffs of Insanity, it's true. Um. Okay. Let us attack Tomas's question about Gandalf. Okay. It is said that uh, Gandalf 1.0 dies when fighting the Balrog at Moria. Uh, when he dies. His spirit travels back to Valinor, and then he is sent back to Middle-earth, where he reincarnates in a whole new body. How is it that he still carries Glamdring with him? Did the spirit carry the sword both ways, or was he reincarnated exactly at the same location where the old body died before, uh, therefore he was able to retrieve the sword? The latter. The latter. I believe that he is. Uh, that's why the eagle comes and picks him up. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is indeed my belief that when Gandalf returns naked, and by the way, I'm not convinced he goes to Valinor when he dies, for the record. I think he goes elsewhere. I don't think it's the Valar he meets up with. I think it's Iluvatar he meets up with. Um, but um, anyway, uh, he does. Uh, but I do believe that he returns to the mountaintop um, naked and is... Uh, now, why should that be? If he's being reincarnated, if he's being given a whole new body and sent back to Middle Earth, why send him? Why send him to the like inaccessible peak of Zirak Zigil? Um, I I think it's mostly just a question of. Oh, there we are. Interesting how they have to like manifest. What news is there? I'm being attacked by a deer. You know, the usual. Hey, yeah, don't worry about me. I can fight off this fearsome deer. Even though I'm now bleeding worse than I was when the Haradrim were killing me. Okay. Uh, and now, the final dude... Um, yes, Phil says, he, doesn't he say he lies there for days with the stars wheeling overhead? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Um, it's possible he went to Gallifrey, um, uh, to be regenerated, but no, I, I, it seems to me sort of, uh, symbolic. Oh, and by the way, hi, Pine Leaf. Um, it seems to me sort of symbolic, um, more than anything else. That is, he's coming, he's returning uh, because his work is unfinished. And so he is sent back, um, he sent back to the place where he had been, like to resume the work that he'd been doing. And thus he resumes his work exactly where he left off, you know? Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> might seem sort of over literal, but also there's another, like, it also seems to work fairly well symbolically for him to reappear, like, on a mountaintop, basically. Um, there's, um, there's something like, uh, a, a, uh, I went to and came back from heaven, uh, kind of atmosphere to that whole exchange, which makes a mountaintop feel like an appropriate place for him to return. Um, so, 
Yeah. All things considered, I'm not sure. How else that would have happened? This um, darkness is a weight on my mind. Yeah, like where else would have been more appropriate? Was he going to show up at the Havens again? Every one of my men back at his post, you are a true soldier. You've really saved my hide this time. I suppose we should go and report to Baranor. Devise our stratagems before the battle is joined and all that. Okay. Let's do it. Well, well. It appears we are as prepared as we can hope to be. I thank you for your help. Now, will you honor us by standing with us against the foe? All Arach will, would be forever in your debt, and after all, you are in here and they are out there. What? What? <laughs> Wait. Since I'm in here and they're out there, uh, are you saying I should stand with you instead of against you? What a strange turn of phrase that was, Baranor. Um, exactly, Kendall. I do think in the end, Gandalf respawns where the game file last saved. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's it. We, oh, sorry. I'm missing dialogue. I say we should be out there on the field of battle. That's, a, that's the town, not a field of battle. And we've been over this. The bridge is our best position of defense. Sorry, the bridge is our best position of defense. Yeah, Barnard, clearly. The Southlands will be upon us any moment. I dearly hope we are prepared. I am heartened that you are here with us at the very least. Now I must address the men. If you call that addressing. Now, men, the enemy draws nigh. Lord Forlong left us here to keep guard while he rode off to fight. Now we must fight ourselves. Not, I mean, fight ourselves. I mean, we ourselves must fight. Let me, let me, let me, let me come again. For Forlong! Advance forward very slowly for four long. Oh, I can't stealth. Hmm. Huh. He's going to come and straight up attack me, huh? Okay, no problem, so we're stealthed. We're doing fine. Baranor must not be defeated. Dago and Indir. All everybody everybody lives. Okay. I'm just gonna sneak down here. And hide in the flowers. Okay, hey, that was fun. All right, you guys got that one. I guess I have him like five on one, so. What is wrong with my... Why am I walking like... Oh, because I'm in walk mode, that's why. Dumb. Okay. Who's watching and learning? Oh man, you just spotted me? Griffith is losing his touch. Look at me, I'm just doing tricks. Are they those tricks? Is that a trick, technically? Or maybe this one is the trick. Yeah, that's the trick. India and Dag are still arguing. Okay.
Hey, look, it did stun multiple opponents. Yeah, I forgot what that trick did. Don't worry. What happened? Oh, there's Dagor. Man, how many identical waves did we have of these guys? Come on, would you please? Stupid targeting. is doing oh they're fine okay oh yeah look at this we're stunning multiple people see there Thanks for helping, Indir and Barnar. Hooray! They've fallen back! We won! They are routed. Dagor, I have an idea. Why don't you, um, just go herring off by yourself, shouting raw? Um. Okay. I was going to try to protect him from his own um, impetuousness there. So, Baranor, that went well until the end. This what madness is this? Running off into the night? Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps it is better he remained here in Arnak. Had he gone with Lord Forlong and behaved thus on the true field of battle, just think of the disgrace! But I am rattled and winded from the combat. Let us retire, set the townsfolk at ease, and tend to the wounded. Then, without delaying over long, we should set out in search of Dagor. Okay. In the meantime, I got a sweet pair of pants. Oh, and dear. You turned out to be the sensible one. Oh, I. Oh, I missed. Oh, the Dagor, you fool. Yes. Where are you going, Dagor, you fool? Yeah. Yeah. Not surprising. Okay. We had won. We rebuffed the foe. But why, by the kings of old, would Dagor run off like he did? Now, instead of raising a joyous shout in our victory, I hang my head in low despair. Woe is me. Woe, daughters and sons of Arnach. Well, I mean, Dagor's an idiot, but... I don't know that we have to be so upset as all that. Okay, let's see. Trousers of the Flowered Veil. If there is an item in the game I find I have always wanted, though I never knew it, it is Trousers of the Flowered Veil. Yeah, pretty much. Will we, ever see the sun we have again? drawn but a few breaths since the Haradrim retreat, and I would be loath to breathe many more without knowing what has become of Dagor. Would you follow his reckless tracks and learn his fate? <clears throat> I could trust no one more than yourself with this task, so dear is it to my heart. Go and do whatever must be done. I guess I'm going to be infiltrating the camps again, probably. At first, though... Okay, let's see. What do we have here? <clears throat> trousers of the Rivers? Nah, I can upgrade that. This is the Trousers, uh, the Fortified Jacket of the Five Rivers. Okay. Do I have anything of the Flowered Veils yet? Shoulder Pads of the Valleys? What a mishmash. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Massive upgrade. Massive upgrade. Uh, 
Okay. Meanwhile. All right. Okay. I shall use my newfound familiarity with the way out of town. I love that there are just flower petals all over here in Arnach. I feel like I'm in a constant, uh, you know, triumphal parade. Okay, so we can go up here, carry on, and we take a right. Uh huh. There we go. Let's see. Yes, the flower petals do distract one from the ash piling up. Agreed. Let's see. Here. Uh oh. I think I found him. He died in combat in this clearing. With orcs? Um, gather stones for a carrot. Oh no, that's where I'm supposed to put the carrot. Okay. I'll build a cairn. Do I have to bring it stone by stone? No, I can carry all the stones together. Okay, fine. He died doing what he loved, yes, he did. He did. I mean, it's a little too bad he died in disgrace, but I think Baranor is kind of overreacting. I mean, again, really foolish. He did lead off some of the other men, which was really not a good look at all, but uh, here's my last Karen Stone. No real cause to give way to despair, as he was, as Baranor was suggesting. Okay, let's see. Building a cairn. There we go. That is one sloppy cairn, Grifflet. Oh, and now I get to mourn. Yeah. Solemn silence. It's true. I mean, he didn't run away from the fighting. It, it could have been much worse. I mean, like, his shame could have been very much greater. Um, <laughs> you're right. I shouldn't criticize poor Grifflet. He has apparently piled up stones that are taller than himself. So. In honor of Barry Adir. What are you talking about? Barry Adir would not even have deigned to notice the, that the Haradrim were attacking. Barry Adir would never have run off like that. He would have, like, you know continued his shuffleboard game without paying the slightest without like uh, dignifying the Haradrim invasion <laughs> with his notice we woke this morning to no sun. No a tear day. falls from Baranor's eye poor lads in truth it might have gone just this way had Dagor gone off with Forlong and the others he died running into battle and not from it I see now a kind of naive folly mixed with those brave passions I so admired in Dagor, but I think I shall remember him for that bravery and his soldierly bearing. In my heart, he died a soldier's death. 
Well, that's a good way Will to think about it, Baranor. We must remember the dead, but not at the expense of the living. Arnak will not forget your name, Griffith, and neither will I. I have one last favor to ask of you, and it requires less in the way of valor, but more in the way of haste. It is a service to both of us, for this is uh, for this letter to Lady Vanyalos speaks of all that has passed in Arnach, and therein your name is greatly praised. Will you bring it to her and earn the privilege of her company? Earn the privilege of her company? Hmm. Her hall is on a rise on the northeast of Imloth Meloe. Lady Vanyalos is the sister of Steward Denethor, and the rule of Imloth Meloe has fallen to her while her husband Forlong has gone to war. She is a wise woman, and the knowledge of what befell in Arnach may help her prevent it in Imloth Meloe. Interesting. So, the so. In the Lotro world, Forlong is Faramir's uncle. Huh. I mean, it works. It works. Um, you know, marrying your sister off to you know one of the you know lords in one of the largest fiefs of Gondor would be, you know, a totally sensible thing to do. Sure. Okay, now we get to go to Imloth Meloe. I'm excited. I was just about to start to answer another lore question, but I don't think it's a good idea considering I'm about to go into a new area that I haven't seen. All right, so here we're going in through the... Well, really, there's a lot of... There's a lot at these gates. It's very busy. Loving the roses, though. You know... If I were the standing guards, I'd feel resentful towards the sitting guards. I mean, they get cooler axes... They get to sit down. Do you get a promotion to sitting guard? Do you think? I mean, do you have to serve, you know, long and faithfully in the wars before they let you be a sitting guard? Or do you think it's a rotation? Like, you know, four hours standing and two hours sitting kind of deal and they have like a ceremonial moment where they stand up and march around in circles and then when another pair goes and sits down okay so far there are more cobblestones than I expected in Imloth Milloy I have to admit uh I thought Imoth Meloe was a, you know, a place where, like, Athelos grows in the wild and all that kind of... I thought it was a more kind of garden-y thing. You know, I expected fields of wildflowers and that sort of thing. Hey there, Marinir. Forgive me, burglar. This, exact, this is exactly Lady Vanulus' dream as she told it to me. A hobbit, looking as you do, coming up this road under a strangely darkened sky. The description fits exactly. Ooh. Denethor has an oracular sister? That is so cool. Lady Vanulos will want to speak with you at once. You can find her within her hall to, to the north on, on the northeast rise. I do not pretend to understand how this can be, but she will certainly be filled with wonder at seeing her dream made flesh. What can this mean? Love it. Okay, I am come to fulfill prophecy. Yay, am I come, as foreseen. I am also lost, which is also as foreseen by some, anyway. Hang on, I'm going to hang a right here instead. Uh, here's where all the damsels come. So this is where... Uh, more of the refugees from Minas Tirith came, right? This is where the maidens were heading. The maidens whom uh, Bergil did not want to join. Okay, I think I'm on the right path. 
This could explain a lot about how far-sighted Denethor turns out to be, even with the Palantir, Phil. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, thinking about Gandalf's comments about how true the blood of Numenor runs in Denethor. Um, it, uh, it Should it do so in the veins of his sister as well, that would seem a perfectly appropriate thing. Vanyalos. Ta-da! Here I am, the Hobbit foreseen. Welcome to Imloth Mellowy, good traveler. Captain Mariner believes it was you I saw in my dream. Are you the only traveler of your kind who will visit us during this strange darkness, I wonder? Well, it depends on your point of view. If you consider it from within the narrow frame of the story, presumably yes as I don't think Pippin is headed down this way, at least not for some time. However, uh, it's also possible that another PC could be coming through here almost any second, so you really never know. You might see a hobbit every 15 minutes, for all I know. Um, <clears throat> anyway, will Marinir send me every one who does? He's a good captain, but perhaps not the best interpreter of dreams. Seriously, you have another interpretation of, like, the hobbit is going to come under a darkening sky? Still, it is true and well known that I and those of my blood have had dreams of great portent. Interesting. So she is not a believer in her dreams, but the captain is. Are you a bearer of good tidings, Griffith, or ill? And if you were, would you know the difference? Ooh, a deep we philosophical question. It is good to speak with someone today. new, even if you were driven here by sorrow and war. So many good men have gone away to Minas Tirith, my husband Forlong not least of them. Indeed, he exceeds them all, in girth at least. Ha! <laughs> Not the least. That's good. That's good. Fat jokes, Vanulos. I like it. My forelong always had such a sense of humor, and fond of his dinners, too. One sound has fled beyond the walls of my city, Griffith, and I miss it almost as much as forelong. The sound of laughter has quite vanished from the Vale. Has its absence affected my people as grievously as it has me? I ask you to speak with the few trusted folk who remain, and learn if they have given up hope of victory and peace in, Imlo in Imloth Meloe. Hathalon is my master at arms, and he is responsible for training the few warriors who remain. If he has given in to despair, I fear the sickness will spread to his recruits. Marinir, my captain of the guard, oversees the flow of refugees by the fountain in the middle of town, and master healer Brunil treats the injured within the hall of the gentle hand on the western side of town. <laughs> Sorry, that makes, is, there, is there a hall of the rough hand somewhere else, like where they where they have like fight club or something? I rely on all three of these good people, and I need to know they are still able to carry out their duties. You want me to like cheer them up? Hang on, I have a letter for you too. We Welcome to Imloth Meloe, the Vale of the Sweet day. Flowers. Breathe deeply of its fragrances, burglar, and be renewed. Sadly, I have grown too accustomed to the aroma for it to lift my spirits in these dark days, when I have need of it. Lady Vanulos takes the letter from you and reads it carefully. I am pleased that you helped to repel the attack upon Arnach, and my heart goes out to the poor boys who fell in Gondor's name. The kingdom is more full of mourners than I have ever known it. Ah, and get a tour? While you tread the paths of Imloth Meloe, do not keep your eyes upon your feet. I shan't. These fair arbors and gardens recall the grandeur of my kingdom's past. I have walked them many times since my youth, and to remember them is the sweetest respite. I ask you to take note of the loveliest sights you see here. When you return to... <laughs> what am I doing, like a trip advisor review of, a, of Imloth Meloe? Can recommend. Uh, when you return to me, you may recount them. And so I will relive the pleasures I knew through your fresh eyes. And we would appreciate your giving Imloth Meloe five stars, Grifflet. Okay. There's a lot of text in that quest box right now. Um, Brunel in the Hall of the Gentle Hand. Oh, man. And we're going everywhere. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do a... Let's do a bring about things here. All right. Hang on. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's a fountain. I could see this 
little path headed off somewhere and I'm like where does that go it's a fountain that's on the map here a little fountain gazebo where are we looking I can barely see over this wall is it the exit kind of hard to tell the sight lines in Imloth Meloe are not great I mean the sights are very nice I'm not I'm not grading it down here Vanulos. I'm just saying that you can't see very far in Imloth Meloe. You're right, Kendall. In Gondor, it'd be a seven-star rating system. So true. So true. Imloth Meloe. Seven stars. Seven out of seven. A great place for fragrances if less good for sightlines. So notice that in the place where we are told that Athalos grows like heavily, um, we are supposed to be going around and making sure nobody is despairing. Hey, you want to boil some Athalos around here or something, Hathalon? Hey, cheer up when you're training people. News do you bring, How am I feeling? I have seen better days and better nights, burglar. Some of the warriors have already left this city, and now I am forced to remain behind and train youths and old men. This is a city of healers and potion makers, not fighters. Even with the finest training I can give to them, this vale is nearly undefended. Tell Lady Vanulos we must hope the enemy does not come to Imloth Miloe, for that is the only way we might survive. That sounded a little bit wan hopish there, Hathalon. Keep your chin up, or to use that frankly alarming phrase that Tolkien used in the first draft of The Hobbit, keep your pecker up. Blossom, river, and stonework alike are watched over by what? Slope side ranks of mountain pine. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is sounding like a website description. <laughs> Blossom, river, and stonework alike are watched over by slope side ranks of mountain pine. Yeah, it sounds like uh, straight from the brochure. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to take a right and go. Oh, oh, there's a refugee and his chicken. Okay. Uh, are those... These are refugee goats? Or are they native goats? They allow deer in here? No wonder he's worried about their defenses. This place has already been infiltrated. This is quite nice. I like this little extra bend down here with the... Maybe I could actually get on horseback. What am I going to get up here? I bet you I'm going to get another uh, brochure phrase. Oh. What do we have? A little... Well, this is a large gathering to watch. The... Oh, they're not watching the kids dance. They're here for the concert. I thought this... I didn't notice they were playing instruments at first. I thought everybody was gathering watching <laughs> the rather half-hearted attempt. It's not even... It's not. They're not even dancing together. There's like the one girl kind of dancing and the boy enthusiastically cheering. Okay. Now it's... We're in for, you know... Okay, do it. It's going to be right here. Oh, yeah. Where the arrowy comes down from the mountains in great cascades, noise and peacefulness blend into one. Um... Yeah, sounds like a... Like the voiceover, like a very soothing voiceover in their television commercial. Where the arrowy comes down from the mountains in great cascades, noise and peacefulness blend into one. Imloth Meloe. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I love it. I love it. Okay, so I've got... Oh, 
I saw three more tourist spots. Yeah, I can't really do justice. Uh, I don't have the voice to do justice to the voiceover that we really need. But I think, is this the House of the Gentle Hand? It's huge. It is, the Hall of the Gentle Hand. <laughs> you bet Cleoina does. Uh, no, no, no. I can't. I can't do the Imloth Milowy ads in the Cleoina voice. No, I can't. I can't happen. Right, Kendall saying is fine print. Maybe besieged by invading Haradrim. Yes. <laughs> Are you saying you should consult your physician if you uh, sustain an invasion that lasts for longer than four days or something? I don't know. Okay. Wow. Um, whoa. Hang on. Saw a quest ring. I was going to say, where is the guy in here? Ah, there's the guy. Brunil, chief healer of Imloth Melloway. Hello there, milady. Lady Vanula with? sent you to ask after us. Bruno scowls at you. The sick are sick, and the well are weary. I would not expect the lady to come to these halls, but I suppose sending you shows that at least she thinks of us on occasion, toiling away for the health of her people, slaving away night and day, working our fingers to the bone. Tell her that we, that we do what we can with less than we need, and if we complain, we do it only as a result of much hardship. Dower. Well, that's a modest way of describing it. How would you... Uh, can I, I be of any assistance pardon. to you, Brunier? There are so many demands upon my time, Griffith. I cannot be everywhere that needs me. I have spoken with the captain of the guard, but Mariner thinks I am jumping at shadows and will not look into this matter for me. Is it the deer? I, I'm here for you. I, I believe you. Perhaps you can be my agent in this. It is my duty to heal the sick, but six of those in my care have taken turns for the worst beyond all reason. It is no chance if you want one healer's opinion. They drank of the same mixture, but where it should have helped, it is only hindered. I think some sneak has poisoned my medicine. Some lurking foe wishes to bring down the hall of the gentle hand and cast doubt upon my own abilities. Someone is lurking within or without the hall, and I need you to search any possible hiding places for this villain. Oof. Any possible hiding places in this enormous building? Okay. Let's play hide and seek. If you if you have been lied to about Corsair ships in the harbor, you may be entitled to compensation. Um, okay. Uh, hang on a second. Yikes! All right. Uh, let me do a tour here. So there are three hidey places inside. All right. Um, huh, how about this? Excuse me. Uh, have you seen anything hiding? Is there? Could you hide in the well? Oh, that's a good hiding place. Probably not. Apparently not the one that we're looking for. Um, I haven't hidden the loot player. Uh, anywhere to hide in here, sick patient? I'm going to get some books to read and stuff. In the... Hi. Oh, we're morning. I'm sorry. I was just looking for hiding places. Oh, possible. That bookcase. Behind the bookcase? What fiendish cunning! Whoop. Wrong button. Okay, searching in the bookcase. Are you are in the little cubbies under uh, the little cabinets in the bottom? The suitability of this hiding place you find, despite it. Yeah, I mean. You could hide anything in those little cabinets under the bookcase, but there's nothing suspicious in that random bookcase. 
nothing at all. Okay. How about up here? No. No. Let's see. Uh, oh, nice. I like how they have, like, got loot players, you know, musicians spread throughout the house. Okay, is this the center again? Yeah, let me go around this inner ring now. I think if I do sort of three rounds. Aha! I'm just looking for bookcases then. Yep. No, nothing suspicious here either. So Griffith has reasoned that in this enormous building, the only place where anyone could reasonably hide would be in the cupboard at the bottom of a bookcase. Sounds legit to me. Ah. Oh, look at that. I made a beeline to this one. Uh, oh. Nothing in that bookcase either? All right. I have checked all of the little cubbies on all of your miniature bookcases and found nothing. Nothing, I say. That in itself is suspicious. But I shall not rest until I find the culprit. I shall now look for bookcases with cubbies in them outside. Oh, oh no, this is a particularly suspicious rosebush. Because see, if anyone were hiding, they would not hide in the big rosebush. They would hide in the little one. That truly is suspect. Suitably, seemingly ideal hiding place. <laughs> a rose bush of three feet, three feet in diameter. <laughs> oh, bush is it Boosham? Is that what did the, the thirteen is supposed to be like? Be? Am I really a professor? Yes, yes, I am. I have a PhD in rose bush searching. No, I, have P I yes, I really am. A professor. Seems to be an ideal high. No, still nothing suspicious here either. Okay. This is getting serious now. Uh, gotta look for other uh, suspiciously small <laughs> rose bushes. He's gotta be in one of them. I cannot wait to go and reassure Vanuos of how, not Vanuos, what's her name? The healer person. Of exactly how thorough I've been. Excuse me, one side, coming through. Rose bushes to search. This seems to be, oh man, nothing here either. It's almost impossible. Well, I've searched everywhere. I don't think it can possibly exist. Well. Which way did I go? Was it this way? Over here and then bear right? Yes. Okay, Bruno. After an extremely thorough and scientific search of every cubby and miniature rose bush around. What is the meaning of this? No. 
I do not question the efficacy of your search. Well, I wouldn't if I were you. I think the true problem here is that our sneak must be even more stealthy than I suppose. Find even smaller rose bushes and even more unlikely cupboards. Uh, we must search every every matchbox and pile of leaves. I think perhaps I've gotten ahead of myself. We need to ask the right questions, and I think we should start with the most basic one of all. If I wanted to poison that healing draft, how would I go about doing it? Why, I would taint one of the components that goes into it. I have collected the ingredients that go into the mixture, and I give them to you. Will you take them to the field beneath the long stairs in the northern area of town and feed them to the goats there one by one? Oh, oh man, so much for no goats were harmed in the making of this stream. I think the goats will tell us if one of those ingredients is tainted. Well, yeah. Can I test it on the deer instead? I mean, at great risk to life and limb, obviously. Okay. Excuse me, people. All right. <laughs> See, this is why deer hate me. I'm just trying not... The deer already hate me, though. I'm just trying not to alienate the goats, too. Right? I mean, pretty soon word is going to spread that I'm like a goat experiment. I try experimental medicines on goats. I think this is probably poison, so I'm going to give it to the goats. Oh, man, the goats are so not going to be pleased. But yeah, I feel, uh, you know, the likelihood of Griffith's reconciliation with the deer is pretty low at this point. Oh, so you're thinking perhaps this suggestion is not a, um, is not in fact a, an act of malice against goats but rather a vote of confidence in the sturdiness of goats. So the goats can be trusted because they're so tough not to kill over and die from the poison components. I wonder which king that is. Whose face is kind of staring moodily out of the hillside at us. I got kids, I got goats to poison. Okay, goats, I am here to make your day. It is time for animal experimentation. Hey, goat, would you like this probably not poisoned? Uh, spear flower? Okay, let's see. No comment from that goat. Okay, I'm gonna... You live, goat. I'm gonna feed dusk flower to this fine chap. Okay. The goat stares at you for a moment, but you're unable to hold his attention. Okay. You didn't mind there? Okay, goat. Number three, what are you eating? Mare's foot. Uh-oh. Oh, down with the goat. Whew. Okay. Oh, but look, see that? He's back up and at it. Okay. These goats are made of sterner stuff. Maybe it's a fainting goat. Maybe that's the problem. Okay, look out, folks. I've got some poisoned mare's foot, and I'm not afraid to feed it to goats. Uh 
All right, Bruno. What is the meaning? Ah, of this? one of the ingredients disagreed with the con constitution of our goat. Which component was to blame? The mare's foot? I see. That is delivered daily. I think we may be closing in on our culprit. The Why mare's foot that goes into the healing drafts is gathered by a man named Egind and delivered to me daily. I had never had I've never had any problems with him before now, but it seems he has shown his true colors at last, the treacherous knave. Egind will likely be somewhere near the front gate of the city, hoping to hand us another bushel of poison greens. Confront him with our discovery and see if he has anything to say for himself. Okay. Dun dun dun. And now, Hercule Grifflet will confront all of the suspects in one room and then dramatically point to Egind. Yeah, disagreed with the constitution of the goat is, uh, <laughs> and I, I, I have to admit, I couldn't help but picture, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> that, the, that the goats, the goats, like, came together in a, in a little, like, uh, um, what is the word, cuprine? Is, is that it? Caprine. Cuprine would be copper. Caprine. Um, in, in a little Caprine, uh, oh wait, hang on, do I get another, is this another site? Here the river Aroe courses widely through the great arches, crashing on a great fall on its journey south. Imloth Meloe. Okay, um... Uh, yeah, so I like the the constitution of the goats, like that they had some kind of like, uh, you know, co constitutional assembly. I mean, they clearly need a constitution or at least a bill of rights, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's going to be this like, Caprine Congress, of goat representatives. <laughs> okay, we should do the Cleoina one. It is cool in the shaded path, and branches of the pine seem to whisper of things long forgotten. That's how Cleoina would do the voiceover for the Imloth Mellowy commercial. <laughs> Amendment number one. No goat shall be poisoned without their explicit consent. I know, right? Come on, like, <laughs> goats unite. <laughs> they, need, they need to form a constitution. <laughs> oh, clear water laughs loudly as it spills into the central fountain. Ancient arches peer from behind flower-laden trees. Imloth. Lady Vanyalos wishes to know the mood of the people. That is why Imloth Meloe will thrive even in the absence of Lord Forlong Grifflet. What ruler cares as much about her people as Lady Vanyalos? Very few, I wager. When you return to her hall, please bring my assurances that we keep good watch on all who approach the Vale. Nothing will threaten Imloth Meloe without me hearing of it first. Most of the warriors have been called away to war, and the few recruits that remain are young and untested. Our master-at-arms, Hathalon, has his hands quite full of trying to turn these boys into fighters. I know he could use your help. The sparring circle is high above us, northwest of Lady Vanyalos' hall. Find Hathalon and offer your services, and I know he will make use of your skills. Imloth Meloe needs as many warriors as she can get, even if she has to make them herself. Okay, here, let me, uh, I think I'm near the gates. Oops, it's almost time to go. So he is cheerful. Marinier is always hopeful, technically, but Marinier is just a bundle of positive energy. Okay. 
out of the rose bushes and into the light at last, Egand. We woke this morning to no sun. Don't hurt no me. I could not get the proper mare's foot by the banks of the river on account of all those orcs haunting the place, so I picked some ones that looked just like them up in the hillside scrub. I didn't mean for any harm to come of it. Please tell Brunir to spare my hide. I feel terrible about this, but we cannot all be warriors. I'm an old man, and my fingers are for picking herbs and flowers, not for swinging swords in anger or terror or any other emotion. I know Gleowina isn't from down here, but it does make sense. If you were going to do a tourism commercial for Imloth Meloe, it would make sense to hire, you know, a famous bard. Oh, and I can't really do a Deep South accent. Can't really do justice to that at all. Okay. As I recall, I come up this way, and I take a left at the fountain at the top of the hill. Captain Mar so, oh, this is the depressed guy, right? Captain Marinier sent you to spar with the lads. You have my permission to do what you can, burglar, but take it easy on him. Imloth Meloe has need of fighters, and these recruits are the best we can manage at the moment. Can you believe it? These youths are the best warriors we have. Pathetic. Do not break them. I need them back when you are finished. Just teach them what you can. <laughs> Drasnik argues that um, the locals will have been here. You're trying to cater to the non-Gondorian consumer base. Exactly, right? That's why. So you bring Glaoina in to attract the Rohirrim tourists. This Makes sense to me. I have seen no real combat, and I wish I might keep it that way. You will go easy on me, will you not? You seem to be a fierce burglar, and I don't want to get hurt. Okay. Boom. Oh. Take that! And one of those! Okay. I just go around beating on folks. Hey! Darkness. I watched you fight and I'm ready for your tricks. Oh, are you? How about that trick? Oh! Look, that was a trick. Oh, see, you weren't ready for it after all, were you? I didn't think so. If only I could fight as you do. Well, not everyone can, you know. Oh, this is the elite young recruit. I do not question your skills. I have seen enough to know that you are a fierce opponent, but I am ready to face you. Underestimate me at your peril. Okay, I'm not underestimating you. Mercy. Okay. No problem. Didn't kill any of them, Hathalon. I greet you, oh, you did very well, Grifflet. And I think you managed not to bruise too many of these wood to be warriors to be beyond repair. Every injury will teach them something important about combat, and they will be better prepared for facing a real enemy. If every youth in Gondor learned to fight as you do, the kingdom would not want for warriors. Okay. Um, I gotta talk to Bruno again and Lady Vanyalos. I should probably go back. Uh, to Lady Vanyalos first. Let me go this way. Down the stairs, across the bridge, take a right. Wah! I hate that. Where's my cursor? Okay.
Uh oh. The goat caucus has formed. We hold these truths to be self evident that goats are not to be wantonly and experimentally poisoned. Oh, bother. Poor Hathlon. Uh, you can do it. Yeah. Phew. Uh, uh oh. Gross having issues. Okay, there we go. There we go. Life, liberty, and freedom from being poisoned by random adventurers. Exactly. I mean, what more? If these are not like some of the basic tenets of goatly existence, whoa. Having a. I think Grifflet had a little too much mare's foot himself here. Why do you interrupt well, me? Well, Grifflet, what did Egan have to say for himself? You explain what the old man said about his ill-advised substitution of another herb for the mare's foot. I should have known. He must have given me Beruthiel's rue instead of mare's foot. Oh, what a moron. They bear similar appearances, it is true, but they could not be more different in effect. It seems there was never a rat in Imloth Mellowy after all, merely a frightened old man making things worse instead of better. I cannot blame him for his fear, Grifflet. I am not a warrior either, and these Southrons are fearsome indeed. What did you say? Orcs? No, I am certain Egan was frightened of the Southron warriors I heard rumor of in these lands. There are no orcs in Lasarak. Well, I beg your pardon. okay, you know, I guess. We need to act quickly if we are to save those who drank from the tainted healing draft. A high concentration of Beruthiel's rue has only one cure, but they are fortunate that I know where to find it. Beruthiel's rue can be countered with a mixture of primarily of dew leaf, which can be found on the bluff above the river Erwe to the southwest of the town's entrance. Pick as much dew leaf as you can and return to me with haste. Okay. All right. Boy, what would have happened if Gandalf had brought Eorth here? Imagine, like, grumpy Gandalf facing off against Brunil. Yeah, where's Eorth's sister? If we don't get to meet Eorth's sister, I'm going to be disappointed. Whoa, way down there, huh? <laughs> yeah, Eorth. Okay, no, I don't want to go that way. That's a dead end, as I recall. Oops. Time is up. Maybe Bruno is the Orth sister? That would be a twist. I mean, it's possible, as the Orth is also a medical professional. You know, maybe it's a family business. Okay. Now, this is right. We go down these stairs. And yeah, and these are by the main gates, right? Yeah, here we go. Where's what's his face? Where's the cheerful guard? I don't know, but I'm not going the right way. That I do know. I've misplaced the cheerful guard. No. I, this is like the opposite direction of where I want to go. Oh, there's the cheerful guard. Okay. Yeah, he's got all turned around there. Here are the gates. All right. I should go. I got to go pick up my kid from school or I'm going to be in trouble or rather he's going to be standing 
in the cold on the curb. Uh, so we shall we shall stop here. Imloth Mellowy, and return next time. So thanks everybody for joining me. I will be here again next week. Um, excited for several weeks in a row here in uh, uh, here in December. Um, so thanks for joining me. I think we're we're we're, we're doing well here in Imloth Mellowy. We finished Arnach. It's just the Harland after this, so we are moving our way through La Sarnach pretty well here. Um, we'll at least get to Athelion by Christmas, I would think. All right, thanks everybody for joining me. Stay tuned for Druid's Fire, and uh, I will see you guys next week. Thanks everybody. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.